up you guys it's Adana welcome back to my channel so we've been talking about the GPA and how it can affect your your application process and your application to PA school in a negative way if you don't meet the 3.0 GPA requirement so I told you guys that I was going to give you all a list of schools um, slash get in a little bit deeper into how to kind of overcome that low GPA or skirt past it. And so that's what this video is going to be about. I found a list of about 40 programs that will look at the last 30, 45, or 60 credits that you've taken. And so if you fit into uh, a category where you, know, you did a lot better towards the end of your undergraduate career, this video is for you. What's up you guys, this is Adana, welcome back to my channel. And so I, I, as you heard in the intro, we're gonna be talking about a couple schools. I'm gonna list about four schools on the different, like different ends of the country, I guess, like four or five schools, I would say. Um, and we're gonna talk about like, their requirements and I'm going to put the extensive list in the description box below of about 40 programs that I've found that look at the last 30, 45 or 60 credits now if you are somebody who like didn't do well your freshman year even maybe some of your sophomore year but you picked it up into gear your junior year and your senior year or even went and got a master's or a post back and you did really well in that this is the option for you because if your overall gpa does not meet that 3.0 but your last 60 credits or your last 45 or 30 credits does, then you are in luck because these schools make you eligible. Remember last time I was like, oh, you're not even eligible to apply to PA school if you're not meeting that 3.0 GPA. And I do want to point out that you still have to have a 3.0 GPA. It's just that it is not only a requirement for the 3.0 GPA, but the 3.0 GPA has to be in your last 30, 45, or 60 credits, okay? So that is great because your cumulative GPA does not truly matter. It What matters is those last few semesters slash years of your, your learning experience, okay? So I'm gonna list it here for you guys or, or here wherever I have more space. Like the first school that I found was obviously at, uh, the University of Alabama, I'm just kind of starting low right so university of alabama they look at the last 60 credits you have to have a, a you know greater than 3.0 at minimum a 3.0 or above in the last 60 credits to be eligible to apply now this is for the people that you know you've gone on you've, you're like an amt and ems like it's not just like oh i don't have any experience at all you have like more experience or maybe a little bit more life experience in the healthcare field and the only thing that's holding you back is your gpa so if that is you the university of south alabama is a school that you can apply to another school like if we're going across to texas right so um the University of Mary Harding Baylor. Okay, they look again at the last 60 credit hours. So another program that you can apply to, and I think for somebody who was kind of like me or uh, many of us out there, you know, you may find like one program and you're like, oh, I have to get into this one program because I meet all the requirements for this one school. But if you're able to apply to multiple schools, you're just kind of hedging your bets. And it's really important for you to tailor make your application to the various different programs because that gives you the best opportunity of succeeding and getting in on your first try. Now, obviously, if you don't get in on your first try, that's not a bad thing, okay? It's not the end of the world. You can try again um, and just maybe broaden your search or um, kind of tweak some things, get a little bit more experience. But that's another school for you. Let's go up to like California. And so for California, I found um, Dominican University of California. They look at the last 30 credit hours, right? So you could have like gone through school messed up a little or maybe like had to go get a post back and if you did a post back or something like that you know and it had you have like a 4.0 in your last 30 credit hours that is what they're looking for so greater than 3.0 in your last 30 credit hours and honestly maybe the, these were um requirements when i was applying but i just didn't know i didn't know and so i applied to all of these schools that I barely met the minimum, right? I was like at a 3.1 or something like that um, for my cumulative and like a 3.0 for my science before I went and I took essentially like another, 
year ish of classes to boost my GPA up. And had I have known that I didn't necessarily have to do that, that my last 30, 45 or 60 credit hours could work, I would have I would have done that option. And it's not to say that I would have gotten in. I don't know if I would have gotten in, but like my my belief is that I would have gotten in on my first try. But I digress. That's neither here nor there. Okay, and then like let's go up to I don't know, maybe like Missouri. Yeah, right. Like California, let's go to Missouri. So Missouri State University, they look at the last 60 credit hours and again another above a 3.0 for their requirements but only for the last 60 credit hours and so like the last school that i'm going to look at is like one of these schools in maryland why not right um so we're going to the east coast we're going to the Mar to maryland and an I, another school again that i found was the university of maryland eastern shore so now they have a little bit of a, a different caveat and and you have like the list of schools that i'm going to list for you you're going to have to go in look at the prerequisite requirements like actually like study these programs to make sure that even if you meet the GPA requirement of greater than uh, 3.0 in the last 30, 45, or 60 credits, that you're meeting the other requirements and you are following through on what they need done. Okay, so some of these schools don't require you to do this, but the University of Maryland does. Um, so UMES asks that if you do not, if your overall GPA does not meet the requirements of a, a, at minimum a 3.0 or above, but your last 60 credits do meet that requirement or like junior and senior year credits has to be greater than a 3.0 combined if that is you you apply to UMES and then after your application has actually been verified you have to email like their admissions coordinator but they list it like list who you actually have to email to request that they just look at your last um two years of undergrad um, and with that being said you know it's not to say that it's automatically going to be approved that you can actually you know still like apply and and really get you know like an interview but if you believe that you are a strong applicant like apart from your gpa everything else like you have like maybe five thousand hours of you know healthcare experience and you know you're off in like some like other countries saving the narwhals or whatever the case may be <laughs> like then you should really apply to this school because it is another option for you and i think that that is important to really understand like how to kind of cherry pick and choose um the schools that will best fit you or that you best fit okay so i'll do another video of, of the schools that actually have a low or no gpa requirement this was the schools that still have a 3.0 gpa requirement but for those of you that fit into that realm of hey i did better like towards the end of my education career than i did at the beginning so my last 30 45 or 60 credits are actually pretty good this is for you so i hope you really enjoyed this video if you did go ahead and like this video if you have any questions for me leave them in the comment section below don't forget to like and subscribe follow me on instagram and on the pa and on instagram at get that c university thank you guys so much for watching i will talk to you guys next time